God will serve indeed. The only one who deserves all the glory, all the exaltation, all honor. Our Heavenly Father and God, indeed, we exalt you now and we will exalt you forever because you reign and the egg trembles. No matter whatever it is, Lord Mighty God, you remain forever. We have come again to acknowledge that you are our God and our Father. The Lord Mighty God will never let you go. <coughs> will never let you go, the Lord. And Father, I pray that you do not let us go. Mighty Father, chastise us day and night, admonish us as it pleases you, correct us, my God, punish us, mighty Father who is in heaven, but do not let your Holy Spirit to give us, for we have no other. You are our hope, our source, the one of our salvation, the Lord God Almighty. If we leave you, where will we go? Where can we run to, my God, my Father who is in heaven, that you cannot find us? We thank you for this special love that you have for us, that you be mindful of us, that every moment and every time you will be speaking to us, Lord, pointing us to the right way that we do not perish, and urging us to come in, even with our families. You are God all by yourself. Lord, we thank you this very evening, and pray again, Lord, my God, that in this place, that you have set for yourself. No man should ever exalt or glorify his, his own name. No man. You alone should be glorified. You alone should rule. And Lord, you alone should be high. People will only see you. They did not see you. Not the human being. Lord, mighty God who is in heaven. Because you are the only one who, who deserves all the glory. We, your children here, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, our God and our Father, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope we have in you. Thank you for the hope, my God, we have in you. And thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and for your mercy. Commit everyone here into your holy hands, Lord. That Father is not a person of meeting every week. That indeed your spirit will go and minister to your children day and night, whatever it is, my God, my Father. And I also pray, Father, who is in heaven, that you also, you also, Lord, look down from heaven with pity and see the challenges your children face. But we know one thing, and we know who said, in this world, you shall face affliction, but be of good cheer. I have already overcome them. And indeed, you have already overcome them, Lord. Who can remove from your hand? There is no one. Who can deliver from your hand? There is no one. So, Lord, we thank you. So, Lord, we give you glory that you remain forever the Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the end of all things. Lord, bless your children. We have come. We are, we are yours. We don't belong to any human being. We say, come and instruct your children. Come and lead us. Come and direct us that we may do your will. And those online and those here, Lord, Father, we say, Hallowed be your holy name. Come and take control of your Holy Spirit. And blessed be your holy name now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. 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 We're going to continue actually what the Lord has been teaching us. Going on to perfection. The first step was there two weeks ago, and that was primarily what? On total spiritual repentance. We went back to it. The foundation that is there. And questions have come and questions have come, even online. Even last week that Pastor Charles was mentioning to us, someone asked a question here. And that question continued. People just need to ask those, that question. So we are going to deal today 
the first, the same thing, the first step into this. But the doctrine of gradualism, the doctrine, or the elusive, or no, not elusive, the delusive luxury of gradualism or progression. Are we, are we all together here? No, listen to me, because that's very important. You know what? In, in this place, we may say, all of us may say, no, we're not still thinking that uh, to change, it takes time. But if we still in sin and continue, and God is screaming on us, God is just saying, keep you perfect, come on. That means that we still think we have time. You see the delusion? Yep. So, this is what we're going to do, deal with. The doctrine of gradualism. The doctrine of gradualism is actually, it probably is an option of what? Can anyone tell me? Of oneself, always what? So, that first sense of security, I have already made it. Or, you know what? The, that remains tomorrow. You know, the, the Spanish, my Spanish friends call it. Manana, right? Manana. Not everything. Oh, no, no, that's tomorrow. And God said, oh, so you think that tomorrow. So that's what we're going to deal with. So that we have to be very careful that when God said we should change, he means it now. Because we don't know the next moment. Okay, we'll go back. Our first step towards perfection. Let's just get out there maybe about one minute. We just said so it is the fear of God, the first step towards perfection. Without that perfecting that very step, go and search the scriptures. There is no way you can even move to any step anymore. There's a foundation that the church has left. And even if I thought it is taught, it is only taught maybe half half. And that is why right now the church is building on faulty foundation. The foundation of one who wants to be a true child of God. A true child of God is the one actually that he has chosen, not only chosen him, but has given him a peculiar right to know the mysteries, to understand the mysteries, to know what God is saying that is not playing. And it's not a matter of standing up there, maybe at the pulpit, and you just using psychology 101 and big grammar, blah, 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 confusing people. No. The word of God is so simple. It's so simple. Whoever wants to come to me, let him forsake his evil way, because he's not going to be able to get to me. I'm not trying to give that for man. Let him do that. Because, you see, there's only one way that one can seek God. Jeremiah 29 13 tells us that seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart. But also now, Isaiah 50, 55, please. 6 to 7. Isaiah 55, 6 to 7. Yes. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So, that is the only way to seek the Lord. It is the perfection of this. Let the wicked what? That is the perfection of it. If there is any element of evil in your life, you are not still perfect, and you can never, you can never enter this race. Let's make sure we get it. If there is anything that is evil in your heart, and of course sin is what? Are we? What are you? Sin is evil, right? If there is anything in your heart, if there is anything that appears like evil deed, anything that looks like evil deed, anything that even smells like evil deed, that is still there, then obviously you cannot enter this world. And it's not only you departing from this evil, you must shun it. That's number one. Not only shunning it, you must what? Abhor it. Not only abhorring evil, you must condemn evil. My people, listen to me. 
Don't mind and worry about anybody telling you, oh, you are being judgmental. Nonsense. This is the thing they use now. Before you say something, if you judgment, being judgmental is telling the truth. So let it be, I'm judgmental. Because then, why would I worry about it? The first one who was judgmental, if that's the case, was who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And not only that, if, they, if not only Jesus Christ, the judgmental came from the Father. I am holy, you must be holy. All you people, this, this and that, will condemn about it. It is the only way, my people, to seek the trick our God. It's the only way. Now, listen very carefully. It is also the only foundation that he has told us. I don't even know why God brought us here to go to this fundamental. In fact, there's something which he calls elementary principle of God. Isn't it what he said in living that one, right? Yeah. Hebrews. Are you sure? 6 1. <laughs> Hebrews 6 1. Yes. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So, how do you leave the elementary school? Of God. I'm calling it elementary school, elementary principle, whatever you want to call it. Of God. Is what? What are we? Huh? By graduating? Yes. I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> By graduating, I'm moving to middle school, right? But how do you graduate and move to middle school? Now, let's put it this way. That doesn't this way. You must graduate. You must have this foundation established before you move in. You know, before I thought you just, oh, you can come to God. Oh, God, eventually you change. I'm glad my brother is here because that's where some people are. I'll come to God, but the process of dealing with God, I will begin to change. But the scripture is telling us no. That's what is being taught everywhere. You see? As you are. The scripture is telling us no. That's why I'm saying, believe me, that's what my belief before. If I come to God, well, God will help me, then everything will go. But God told us, if you want to come to me, you must perfect one foundation. That one is within you to do. Yeah. Don't come crying out to me. That one is within you to do. There's only one prerequisite for you to get and come to me. Willingness. <laughs> Even if I told you I'm willing, I'm willing, Lord, I'm willing, Lord. The Lord said, well, remember, remember, remember my brother, we get the definition of willingness. Yes. You see, see that definition. We said, willingness is what? The determination to do what is required of you. It's not enough. By taking the necessary steps yes. to do that. If you don't take the necessary steps, you're not willing. If you tell me a woman, look at that, I'm willing, I'm willing. Okay? I'm willing. I'm willing to get a job. I'm willing. And then you don't even make any attempt. It's okay. I'm willing. Stay there. You see? But you have to take this step. And that's the step that God wants us to take. My child, you are willing. Thank you. That's, I, I have seen it. But you have to come now and demonstrate to me that you're really serious and you mean this business by departing from evil. This is the way you're going to be able to seek me and get me. That's why he said, that's the foundation of eternal life. Are we, are we all together here? Yes. In Proverbs 8 13, please. Proverbs 8 13. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm -hmm. Pride and arrogance are the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Shun that evil. If you look at exactly what I told you happened with the people that really God just embraced, He said they departed from evil, but the church don't really departed from evil. They shunned evil and hated anything that smells like evil. So, but that's why He also told us that if that is the foundation of eternal life, that's why He told us eternal life is what to do what to know God. In John 17, 3. But how do you then know God? Remember God is the truth, right? So, 
Eternal life is to know what? The truth. Yeah. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. There is no way you can know the truth except you are the truth. My people, are we here? Yes. There's no way you can know the truth except you are the truth. The truth in you, and you are in the truth. Otherwise, you don't know the truth. You just proclaim it. So that's the foundation of eternal life. Is to depart from evil. Build that foundation that cannot shake, that cannot be moved by anyone. It has to be perfect. Are we, are we all here now? It can't be perfect. But then, you see, because this very, today's teaching, oh, hopefully, is going to be brief. Because I have to answer this doctrine. Now, where I was here when we started, it has to answer this doctrine of gradualism. Okay? We call this also the divisive what? Logic of gradualism. It is a false sense of security. I have time to deal with this. But when do you, when do you perfect this foundation? This foundation must be perfected. Otherwise, you cannot build. My people, listen to me. This is the foundation of God that you cannot build. Obeying God is building. My people, uh, we're not God. Obeying God is building. But you cannot even get to that point because why? There are two levels of requirement God requires us. I want you to know that this is a mystery you must understand. There are two levels. And those two levels you must meet them, but you cannot even get to any other level things of God, except you meet the first level. What is the first level? <coughs> They're beginning to sound everything just that way. What is the first level? Come on, my people. Hmm? Okay, read me. Read me Deuteronomy 5.29. Deuteronomy 5.29. Yes. Oh, that they had such a heart mm -hmm. in them, that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So how many levels? Fear me. Fear me. Yeah. And what? Keep all and keep all my commandments. But one is dead. Mm. As long as you don't perfect the fear. Because you cannot build in sin. Are you following what I'm talking about? How can you build without a foundation? The first thing is to fear God. Without fearing God, by departing from anything that is evil, you cannot say you obey God. How can you say, I, you know, I keep God's commandment when evil is in you? My people, my people, please listen to me. That's, there's no way to get around it. When evil, he said, the fear of the Lord is to depart from all evil things. Therefore, you cannot build this structure except this foundation is perfect. Because as long as I build, you know, I'm obeying God. How can you obey God when evil is in you? Are we, are we all together here, please? Let's make sure. You cannot obey God when evil is, is in me. You cannot even build when the foundation is faulty. You cannot build when you don't even have foundation. You cannot build when it's cracked. And you cannot build on sandy foundation. But why? God telling us, said, the first thing to perfect is fear me. Why? There are two, two things also. Please help me. That's what I'm going to be short. Number one, if you perfect the fear of God, and the fear of God, and instantly you die. You make it. So can you see why foundation is all and all? Yeah. You know, our brother was singing. He said, "You are all and all and all." The foundation, the foundation that there's not going to be any iniquity in my heart. It's all and all. It has to be perfected. Wherever there's iniquity, where there's any kind of faith that will face God, you must stop. You must depart from it, you must shun it, you must condemn it, you must expose it. 
That's what God says. That is there for. So two things. Number one, if you, if anything happens, you know why? This God does not want any one of us to perish. And he comes to tell us this is the most important thing. Even naturally when we are building, what is the most important thing? The foundation. It's not the foundation. That's the same thing God is saying. My foundation is because why? The character of God and the nature of God is what? It's holiness and righteousness, my people. There's no way anybody can get around it. He told us, I'm holy, you must be holy. With that righteousness, you're not going to see me now. But he said, there's one thing also told, he told us. He said, in Isaiah 35, 8 and 9. Right? We read it. Isaiah 35, 8 and 9. Yes. A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Let's let's go back. The unclean. Let's get this thing. The highway is there. The highway is what the kingdom of God. And what, is it true? Mm -hmm. The unclean shall not even have anything to do with it. So that's why I was in number one. The reason why we need to perfect that and perfect it now is that if anything happens, we perfect the foundation. As long as we perfect the foundation and something happens immediately and we die, we will be with Him. There's nothing more important to God that we will be with Him. I want everybody to know that. Okay? We will be with Him. Now, remember the thief that was on the right side of Jesus Christ? It was almost instantly, he said, this day, you live in paradise with me. Okay? The second level is what then? Not the second, I'm, I'm just talking about the reason why God said we should perfect the foundation of repentance that we don't anymore. Number one, if anything happens that time, we'll be with him. The second one is that without God, we can do nothing. Let's work, let's forget about obedience love, all those things. It, they will not happen until you perfect the fear of God. It's the first thing. Because why? If that is not perfected, then God will have no fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, people, please, listen to me. If that's not perfected, he said, without me, I can do, you can do nothing. Which means that if he is not in us, and he's not going to be in us, if we don't perfect the fear of him, and if we don't, if he's not enough, we can do nothing on our own. So no matter whatever it is, this foundation, as much as you cannot build any structure on soil or sand with that solid foundation, we need to get there. There's only one way to demonstrate seriousness as far as if you really want to serve God and know this God and you want to get his rest, is that all evil deeds depart from them. Let me tell you one thing. It is hard. If I said, ah, man, these things that God is asking us, it's tough. What am I saying? Do I don't want to what? Do do it. Do it. Well, then you have answered the first question, but you have to answer the other one. I don't want to do it because of what? I don't, I don't want to do it. I love my what, is, what, is, what are you talking about? No. Oh, okay. You're coming close to that. Yes, 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 yes. Because I no, it's not because you love your iniquity. Because you are evil. Okay. My people listen to me. My people listen to me. God said this is what needs to be done so that you will be you will be perfect before me. You will inherit the kingdom of God. It will go well with you and your children. He said, it's hard for me to do. And that's because, number one, I'm saying I don't want to do it. That's one. I'm saying I don't want to do it because I'm evil. I love my evil. Read me John 3, 19, please. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation, mm -hmm. that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds are evil. Huh? Did you finish it? Yes. Read more. For everyone practicing evil mm -hmm. hates the light. That's it. 
I don't want to do it. I don't want to do the light, Lord. I don't want to follow the light because I'm evil. And then, but I'm doing the same thing here to myself because it's the truth. Because if I don't want to follow the light, it's because I'm enjoying darkness and because I'm evil. Simple like that. So let us not deceive ourselves. Because it doesn't get any difference to God. God wants us to have understanding. Any, anyone who is the light of no one to come to that, read it, please. Go ahead. Yes. For everyone practicing evil hates the light mm -hmm. and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. For what is what is what? What makes this person a fool? He doesn't know that God sees him, right? He doesn't know that God sees him, right? He doesn't want his deed to be still, but he doesn't know that the one who sees his secret sees him. Until you get to a point where you do not mind or worry about human beings. But wherever you are, you want to make the best home and family, my people. Follow the word of the Lord. Do you want to make even where you are, your business, job, whatever you are, you want God to fight for you. Everything you do, apply that the greatest spiritual victory. Everything you do, do it unto God. Because no matter what, Lord, I cannot hide from you. Which means you fear God. That's what is the fear. I don't want to do anything else. Lord, not because God will punish me. If I do that, I'm no different from the devil. Because the devil is afraid of God. Spiritually, he does not fear God. Because the devil, what? He fears and what? Trembles. He trembles. Why is he trembling? Because he's afraid of punishment. If I'm afraid of punishment, then obviously there's no difference between me and the devil. But if I do what I do unto God, because this Father, this Father, this God, who has so merciful, come and do this man who was a sinner before unto him in appreciation of my father and my God and in reference to your name and the love to return the love you love for me that's why I do what I do please let me allow me to do that and obey out of that not I service are we, are we all together in this situation are we that's why it's a perfect this alien. The only way you can demonstrate that in, indeed this God has been so good to me and is so mindful to me that He will, be able, he will call me. Remember what He told us. The amazing grace, my people. The amazing grace. He said, No one comes to me except I draw him myself. So, of the billions on this day, He drew you to Himself. And not only drawing you, He told us, You know what? When, even before I would draw you, I have. What? For me, I for knew you. I, the Lord, for knew you. I chose you. And I predestined you. I've been there all the way, showering my grace unto you, investing all sorts of things unto you. That's sufficient to say, Lord, I must never pay you back evil for the good you have done for me. As a father, that's the way he wants us to, to follow you. As Christ, Followed him. Are we, are we all together? Yes. So we're talking about now is the time to do that. But then, when the time to perfect this fear of the world is now, the scripture told us last, last week we started it. Hebrews 3, please. 7 and 9. Hebrews 3, 7 and 9. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, Read seven and eight, my dear. Sorry. Do not harden your hearts mm -hmm. as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, mm -hmm. where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was. It's okay. It's okay, my dear. Today, today. Now, let me let me say this. Why is God telling us today? Because we don't, we don't have weather shortbreaks. You see, it is obvious. If you have not, it's it's not obvious to you. That a human being does not even know himself. A man, a woman doesn't know himself. Sometimes you think you know yourself until something happens. 
Are you following me? That's why I told you sometimes you sometimes you say, well, you know, I know myself very well. But there are certain things that will happen. You begin to go back. If the Spirit of God is has taught you, I said, I thought I knew myself. I didn't I didn't know I didn't know what I would do. It could be maybe money, it could be somebody stepping on you, it could be wounded. I mean, it is so many things that will happen. Say, my goodness. Have I actually known myself? That's why the Bible says, don't trust yourself. Because you'd be a fool to do that. Okay? But one thing that the Bible also tells us one thing. Even if at all a man will even begin to imagine that he knows himself, that's one thing that will elude him all the days of his life. That's time. That's why the conceptual baggage of gradualism is not in keeping the spiritual reality. It's not. The conceptual baggage, that baggage you have, Gradual, I gotta move gradually. I gotta, it's not in keeping with spiritual reality because you don't know. Since you don't know the time, it's, it's incumbent on you to do something now before it is too late. And the Bible tells us that. Give me a place. 8, 6 to 8. Ecclesiastes 8, 6 to 8. Yes. Because for every matter, there is a time and judgment. That's right. Though the misery of man increases... No, well, for every matter, there's a time of what? Judgment. Which one do we know? No. No? Time. No, which one do we have... Okay, let me check, sorry. Which one do we have control of? No. 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 <laughs> but you see, what Pastor Charles is saying is this. A true child of God, born of God, has control of time. That's why we will go out and some of the pastors will be looking at me when I say, does anybody know the time? They said, no. I said, I'm, I'm the only one. They said, what? I said, yes. I know tomorrow. My tomorrow is this second. They make us know my stocking, this second. It may be the last. I have to realize that. That this second may be it. Therefore, this second, do something. If you do something which is pleasing to God, then you are God. I want, and if God and I are one, God knows tomorrow. Why do I have to worry about tomorrow? If my father knows tomorrow, remember what, what Jesus Christ said, I am a father, I want, right? Every time my father belongs to me and so on. If God is with me, the thing I have to worry is that how do I please him and make sure I maintain that relationship. Let him worry about time. Because if I worry about time from now to kingdom come, it can't change, it can't change anything. Are we together? Yes. <laughs> so, so the time goes. Let's read it from the beginning. Because for every matter there is a time of judgment. Mm -hmm. Though the misery of man increases greatly. Though the misery of man increases greatly. Yes. For he does not know what will happen. Mm. So who can tell him when it will occur? Mm. No one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. And no one has power in the day of death. Mm. There is no release from that war. And wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. Chai. God? It, they will not, okay, let's move. It will not deliver those that are given to it. Read me the second letter 9 to a place. Ecclesiastes 9, 12. Yes. For man also does not know his time, mm. like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared in an evil time, when it falls suddenly when upon falls, them. When it falls suddenly upon them, and my people, it could fall suddenly upon anybody, upon anyone. I didn't share a testimony, even this uh, Monday when I was with the pastor, Jack, what happened to me? It could have been the end of it. But this God intervened. It could have been the end of it. What intervened? What would you do? What, where would you be? What would you tell God? Are you ready? That's why he said, men do not know the time. So the concept of gradualism is foolishness. It's a wrong doctrine. Therefore, if you don't know the time, and it's not in our hand, and we know that, we know that Matthew 24, 36, it tells us so that no one knows the time but my father, right? Right? Yeah. So if you don't know the time, it tells us. 
If you don't know the time, there's something you will do. Give me this, Matthew 24. Read from 43, 44. Matthew 24 from verses 43 through 44. Yes. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Coming at an hour you do not expect. If I am sold to the concept of gradualism, that's my question now. And uh, I die in the process. What, what happened to me? Yeah. So, so people who buy some of this doctrine, why, do, why don't they question? If I don't have the time, I don't have any control. What I'm saying is okay, what somebody, human being, is saying. Or rather, what God is saying. I'm not talking about what they go through by saying, who am I? What God is saying, you don't have time. And that's why God told us, even Jesus Christ himself, that he had to run on that day. Give me John 9, 4, please. John 9, 4. Yes. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Mm -hmm. The night is coming when no one can work. The night is coming when no one can walk. There comes a time that when the trumpet sounds, only those who are ready, are we, are we all here? Are we all here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where did that happen? Even the five foolish virgins. Remember? Mm -hmm. The time come and the trumpet sound, boom, the time has come. They said, my goodness. So, can I get oil? I don't know. Said, How can we be foolish? You go and get their own oil. And they went to get, to get their oil. oil. You remember the things that they have time. They, they have time, and by the time we get, we get oil. But they, got, they, they found out they didn't have time. When they came back, what happened? They came knocking, and no one could open unto them. And that's why the Bible warns us be careful. If even Christ gave us an example or a parable, let me please look 12, 16 to 21. Luke 12, 16 to 21. Yes. Then he spoke a parable to them saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. Mm -hmm. And he thought within himself saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Mm -hmm, relax. Take your ease, yes. eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. And whose will be those things? Whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself. It's okay, my dear. So, leave it there. So you have many good things. Start up for many years. You have tomorrow, you have next month, you have another year. In fact, it doesn't end. And that night, he goes to sleep, he doesn't wake up. Give me James 4 13 to 17. James 4 13 to 17. Yes. Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, mm -hmm. spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. To him it is sin. The life is just my vapor, he said. And when you realize your life is vapor, then you should 
Make haste and do what needs to be to be done. I will all together there. Before I thought you we were going to catch up on the, the two keys very quickly, but I just want it to, to, for us for this to sink in. Self-preservation is why we do many things we do. And it's a natural cause. There is no human being, no matter how God has taught you, that you still don't have that some element of self-preservation in you. But when self-preservation graduates into what? No, when it graduates into gratification. You know, gratification is different from self-preservation. Self-preservation means, I don't want to this with that, but when it comes to that self I want to grab it. Immediate gratification. Now, whatever it is, let me enjoy myself. I still have time. That leads to what to go myself complacency. And complacency is nothing but when someone actually is gone, is lost, and yet he does not know he's lost. He still believes he's doing the right thing and walking the right thing. That becomes a problem. And that is why, if you look at God, you see, we said two levels. Fear me. Depart from evil and perfect it. The next level is obey me. You cannot build obedience when iniquity is in your, your life. Are we, are we together? Because why? Isaiah 59 to say that what? Isaiah 59 too. Yes, yes. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, uh -huh. and your sins have hidden his face from you. So how are you going to build obedience when you are separated from God? Are we, are we all together? Yeah. We are moving on. Are we all together? Yeah. You're not going to be able to do that because iniquity has separated us from God. But there are people who really hang on to this installment plan. You know, gradualism is like an installment plan. Are we, are we all together? Yeah. So what's installment plan am I talking about? You know, the luxury of installment plan. Let's read, let's read the, the two keys. The portion I told you. Page 33 from paragraph D. The progression argument. The argument that is viciously presented to counter the will of God in order to placate people is that turning away from evil or sinful ways involves a progression process. This is the work of the enemy to give us a lazy mindset. The will of God is that whenever he gives one the grace to understand and know the sinful nature of his deed, he is held accountable if he continues in it. Hence, the Lord warned the adulteress to go and sin no more. See John 8, 11. For she could no longer avail herself on a claim of ignorance. While it is certainly true that maturity in spiritual walk involves a progression process, God commands us to repent and depart from our evil ways now. Some of us demand for the luxury of gradualism at our own pace relative to sin. We want to withdraw from sin in installments, perhaps because we deceive ourselves in believing that we know what tomorrow holds. The sooner we listen to and trust the only one who knows and holds our next breath, the better for us. The better for us. But let me let me just get on to a little bit about that uh, installment. You know, those of you in the banking system, you know what I'm talking about. Installment. What comes before installment? There's installment plan. What comes before installment? Down payment. Yeah. Down payment, right? It is down what? What is the what is the down? No, I know what. What is the down? What have we been talking about? Always think about what I'm asking. What are the foundation? 
Okay. What must happen before installment begins? The down payment, right? When will the down payment be made? When? Immediately. Now, the down, they're telling me now, listen to me. Mm -hmm. Down payment means now payment. Yes. Oh, my people, I'm just using common grammar. It means now payment. He wants us to finalize this agreement. There's something you need to pay what? Now. Okay. Now. <laughs> installment. Can you start a tour installment if the condition precedent is that the damn payment must be made? No. Now, assuming there are many offers given to people, and you fail to put the down payment, and somebody else comes to put the down payment, what's going to happen to you? You lose it, right? That's what gradualism does. That's why he told us, strive to enter. Because the time will come when you want to enter. Oh, as I enter, I'm going to close the door. Leave me please, look, 13. Read from 20 to 23. Look 13 from verse 20. Read from 23. 23. Yes, ma'am. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? Mm -hmm. And he said to them, strive to enter. Maybe that's the one who wants to depart from evil gradually. No, no, I'm just joking. I'm, 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 are you following me? The one who tried to, you know, I, Lord, there's still time. I just have to go on, yes? Strive to enter through the narrow gate. When someone tells you to strive to enter, what is he saying? Make, Make an effort. Make and enter now. Go on. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, say, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank. It's okay, you. my dear. When does the master close the door? <clears throat> when does the master close the door? When, 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 when does the master, when, listen, when has the master, okay, let's change it. When has the master closed the door? Never. Never? <laughs> okay, let me tell you this way. The world will come to an end. Yeah. When is the world coming to an end? Yeah. When you, as an individual, people listen to you. The master may still leave the door for others. But the moment you close your eyes, the door is closed. The moment you close your eyes, either you go there or it's closed against you. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's get this understanding. The world will come to an end. Who cares when the world will come to an end? My world comes again the very moment I close my eyes. Is it? It is appointed unto man to die once. The rest now will be judgment going up on it. Mm. So my people trying to delay and say this is going to happen when it will happen when we don't know. It's a risky game that we cannot afford at all. And that's why it will be there. Let me ask you this other question. Mm. In installment, I don't even know what to do. This what to do. In installment plan, if I pay the down payment, I want to ask you brother, please. I pay the down payment and for a venture, because of no fault of mine or something happens, I miss like one payment. Can the lender have mercy? Yes. 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 Can I give you grace? Can give you grace? Why? I don't care about priority. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> when the lender gives you that, what do you think he's thinking? Because you have showed good faith, therefore, by paying the down payment, the foundation is already built. And allow that's why, if the foundation is perfect and something happens in the future with God, maybe sin, as long as that sin is not intentional, knowingly, willingly, recklessly, it is done out of maybe something you ignorant, you didn't know. God will punish the person, but he will not cast you away. 
Because that foundation is so critical. But without that foundation, there's nothing else. That is why, that is why my people, when sin, sin is something, let me put it this way. I sinned against God. And then because I didn't know anything, I was ignorant. God will have mercy on me. Even Paul said it in 1 Timothy 1.13. 1 Timothy 1.13. Yes. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Was this not a very good warning for those who hang on to gradualism. Paul said, I had mercy because what I did, I did in ignorance. What does that mean then? If I continue in sin because I think I have time, I'm doing it deliberately. Would I still be crying on God to have mercy? And that's why he said, anyone who sins presumptuously is a reproach and an insult to the spirit of grace because the person knows best but he had taken it upon himself and we all together here he said there's no more sacrifice for that individual why one who sins presumptuously has reproached God but he has also done one thing he has declared that a fool, that is even greater, that is even more hope for a fool than that person. Why? My people, because this individual knows. No, I'm not talking about knows, but God bless you. There's something about this individual that makes a fool better. Why are you just looking at me? There's something about this person that makes a fool better. Because this individual is wise in his own eyes. God is saying one thing. He thinks that the way is to be because his own way is wise. That's why he told us. Read me Proverbs 26. 11 to 22 to, to 12. Proverbs 26, 11 to 12. Yes. As a dog returns to his own vomit, mm -hmm. so a fool repeats his That's name. what makes a fool a fool. A fool goes back to the, back, the things he's been doing before. And that's why, because you know why? He's a fool. Perhaps his foolishness is what is actually keeping him doing what he's doing. And he may be ignorant. God, God may have mercy. But this person who knows and thinks he's wise in his own eyes. Let me 12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? Mm -hmm. There is more hope for a fool than for one. There's more hope for a fool than for one who thinks. Oh, God will wait until when I want to change, I will change. In other words, you are saying, I will keep to my own time and schedule. God, you said something, but I thought I'm concerned, I will keep to mine. You know, isn't that the, that's the typical doctrine of, uh, it's all, it's my life. Even in America here. Most of the things are here in America. It's not really here. Once they've always said, it's just come from here. Because they want freedom. Do whatever you want to do. It doesn't make a difference. After all, God will understand. My people, when we know that God told us that the righteousness of the righteous, no, even to start, He told us, He says, any soul, any time we sin, shall surely die. So if one dies in sin, he's going to hell. So why take that chance? Even if I thought you've been so righteous, He wants us. That even the righteousness really to be Ezekiel 33, 13 only. And let's close with that, okay? Ezekiel 33, 13. Yes. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, mm -hmm. none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. He shall die. Mm -hmm. Now, but let me ask you this. Spiritual maturity is a progressive thing. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. 
spiritual maturity. That's why I ask you, if the foundation is solid, the foundation is now. Down payment is now. If it is solid, and by adventure something happens, that actually you have not developed. Remember one thing, your foundation is solid. But the very moment you commit anything that's intentional, knowingly, or willingly, or recklessness, you have no foundation. The foundation is crack. Are we all together? So don't shout on God and say, you know, my foundation has been very good. What's going on? That's why he said, look, if the righteous, the righteous man protects his righteousness, he can build it on that. He protects it. It will not work. But one thing is this. If the foundation is solid, and he said, God, look down from heaven and judge my heart. I didn't do this thing intentionally or knowingly or willingly. But this is the way I feel now, correct me. This God will chastise you, show you the way to go. He's a very merciful God. But anyone who continues to reproach him, then has provoked him and challenged him. And when that happens, it becomes a problem. And that's why when he has rebuked somebody, read Proverbs 29, 1. Proverbs 29, 1. Yes. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So, the one who had this neck is always the one who is delayed. Are we all together? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I had it, but let's, let's wait Give and see what happens. God is not a man. So, my people, what I'm saying is this, and for us to close, this God, I didn't believe me, I thought today would be 20 minutes, but it's gone as usual to cover many things for us, going upside down and say, look the way of the truth. That is no other way. It's not the way of man. It's not the word of man. It's the word of God. That's what we should follow. And God cannot be wrong. He knows what is best for us. And that's why I said, if you want to come to me, then stop. If you don't, you cannot come. We will not have fellowship. Lily as I want. 16 to 18. Isaiah 1, 16 to 18. Yes. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Mm -hmm. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Do all these things. Then, when you must have perfected lessons, then what? Come now. Come now. And let us reason to Enter the highway. Mm -hmm. Because you will not enter as long as there's unrighteousness in you. The unclean shall not enter. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory. What can we say, Lord? What can we say, mighty God, who is in heaven? What is it that we can do to thank you enough for what you do for us in this place? teaching us it will be criminal and abomination for me to even to imagine that I'm the one teaching what you teach through somebody but the person even you teach through my God my father has the greatest risk for whoever stands that is one likely to fall now, my God, that's not only myself, but the brethren here, Lord. What can we, what excuse can we ever give you? You have, you have opened our eyes. You have taught us things that my God, my Father, who is in heaven, even the apostles did not even. God, why you do what you do for us? Because the time is short. The evil day is here. And whoever has ears, must hear my God let this not be in vain my God let this not be judgment against us wonderful and everlasting God grant your children receptive hearts Lord mighty Father speak to them yourself even con follow them go home with them Lord and speak to them wherever they are those online and let them know and let them hear your voice the voice of the Lamb of God the one who came and die that we may not perish. We give you glory. We thank you, my God, my Father. 
we honor you for all and the things you've been teaching us. Lord, please bless your children. Lord, my God, grant them that desire of their heart to know you, to turn to you, to be perfect before you, that holy and everlasting God, they will not labor in vain. We will not labor in vain, my God. We will not labor in vain. Take all glory and bless your children all over. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen.